Hey everybody, on today's episode we're going to replace the oil pressure sender unit from DPE Corvettes. If you haven't checked out my video on how to remove the manifold, uh, please do so here. I talk a little bit about two other ways you could get to that oil pressure sender unit, um, and I'll briefly mention them uh, right after the intro. So let's get started. <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome back to iDrive Daily. So let me paint a quick picture for you. It's a really nice day. Maybe you're headed to work or you're going to get the groceries, decided to take the long route, or maybe it's just, you know, you're out for a cruise. Everything's going fine. You're looking around. People are giving you a thumbs up. They like your car. You're waving to other Corvette owners. Next thing you know, you look down at your gauges and your oil pressure is pegged at 80 PSI. All right, the panic starts to set in. You turn down your radio, you check your DIC. Oh my God, it's pegged well over 100, maybe 130 PSI. You don't hear anything wrong with the car. It doesn't sound strange. Uh, you decide to back off just a little bit. You're not gonna drive quite as hard. Maybe just get home and see what's going on. Well, chances are it's probably your oil pressure sender. And you know what? We're gonna go ahead and tackle that today on today's episode. So I said today twice. Maybe I won't say it again. All right, everybody, before I pull the car into the garage, I want to show you uh, a quick way to diagnose this. Um, I'm not throwing any codes other than my tire pressure. It is cold outside, and I th actually think one of my tire pressure sensors went bad. Um, <clears throat> but if you're having this issue, uh, likely what's going to happen, I'm just going to put the car in, uh, the key in, and I'm going to turn the car to on. Now, the very first thing you're going to notice is it does its sweep and the oil pressure is going to immediately peg to 80. Now this is a little strange because as we know when an engine's not running it cannot create any pressure. So this is probably a good telltale sign that uh, there's a problem with the sender. I went ahead and I took the manifold off. If you haven't seen my video on that please do so in the top corner. There are two other ways you can go about it. You can reach behind the manifold which I found was pretty difficult. My hands are way too big to get back there. And the other reason, the other way you could do it is you can cut a hole in the shroud, which I'm not totally cool about that. I covered that a little bit in the uh, video on the intake manifold, but I just wanted to quickly uh, gloss over them. So the manifold's off. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that oil pressure sender unit. So let's go right to it. All right, everybody, after a little bit of waiting, the kit finally came. Uh, unfortunately, with COVID, USPS is slow as all hell but anyway this is what i ordered uh, from dpe corvettes you can see this is the relocation line it's going to run from where the current um, sensor is out uh, adds a pressure gauge in which is going to be in the engine bay and then this little silver piece here is a new sensor so this kit does come with a new sensor which is nice and the adapter um, the adapter so that the new line will run so one thing you'll see I've done is I've covered the heads. I really don't want to get any dirt in there. Um, maybe it was unnecessary, but these are lint-free cloths, so I'm hoping it'll protect it a little bit more uh, as I quickly get this sensor out. So we're going to pull this sensor here. Uh, it's quite the pain in the ass to get to if the manifold is on. Uh, with it off, not so hard at all. With the relocation kit, if it ever goes bad again, it'll remain not so hard at all. So let's go ahead and get that sender out. Okay, with the old sensor removed, we're gonna wanna take the adapter that comes with our DPE Corvette, slide our crush sleeve on, and install it into the same hole. Now we are gonna wanna torque this to the 18 foot pound as recommended by the factory. The 90 degree on the relocation kit will attach to the adapter. We're gonna position it so that it doesn't interfere with the intake manifold. Align the part so that it goes directly towards the driver's side and then tighten down the adapter fitting. We'll then replace the gaskets and reinstall the intake manifold. All right, to give everyone an update, as to what's going on. I was able to get the manifold back on. My dad came over and helped me, which is always uh, welcomed. Um, the brake booster line is kind of a pain in the ass to wrap around the back, so that was definitely helpful to have him here for that. And then kind of getting all the wires to stuff back in 
where they came from um, was also helpful. Hooked everything up. Uh, everything's in working order. Did give it a test run yesterday. Uh, refilled the coolant. The coolant's a little high, so I'm going to have to take some out, but that's not an issue. Um, did not get that test run on film, but nonetheless, we still have to attach the oil pressure gauge. So let's take a look at that, and we'll talk about where we're going to go. All right, so this is the configuration. You see the oil gauge comes up over here. We're going to use this bolt down here from the coil pack to attach it uh, onto this aluminum bracket. So the aluminum bracket was given a quite a lot of room from DPE Corvettes. This is basically, if you're running a different fuel rail configuration or a different manifold, you can adjust to your needs. Um, of course, we're running stock, so it should be pretty similar if you're running a stock intake manifold and fuel rail uh, combo. So what I'm basically looking at is the gauge is going to end up having to be in line roughly with this uh, gas line. You figure if I look at this cover, stuff to cover back there basically you're looking to have the gas the oil pressure gauge somewhere around in here just a little bit past this fuel line uh, hole so with that being said we're gonna have to get an idea of probably right about there and then by the time I bend the aluminum bracket back it should sit almost in line flush with the gas line that being said uh, we're gonna have to drill a hole in here mark it off and uh, cut part of this bracket off. So let's go ahead and let's get that started. All right guys, so I ended up playing a little shuffle with all of these lines. And I wanna show you exactly what I did. When I did the test fit, I realized that I couldn't bend the aluminum bracket at all without running into problems spacing wise here. And this this line originally that goes to the EVAP uh, purge line was originally over top of this baby back here. Um, and it was just causing a lot of space issues. So what I ended up doing was shuffling this line under the uh, injector harness um, <coughs> it's still able to plug into the manifold and then this uh, evap purge line I shuffled under here uh, the oil pressure line I ended up shuffling back behind pretty much everything and it still has enough room to come out uh, without any spacing issues so that's just what I wanted to show you how I ended up doing it um, so I just got to plug all this back in and then mark off where I'm gonna be bending my uh, gauge. So let's go ahead and continue. To get an idea of where you need to drill your hole, take painter's tape, tape the underside of the fuel rail cover, and then use a piece of chalk to outline the analog gauge. You'll see at the end that while this gave me a pretty good reading of where to put it, I'm not entirely happy with the result, but we'll talk about that when we're finished. My hole marked, it's a two inch gauge. So I'm gonna take this and roughly mark the one inch in the middle. Somewhere around there is more than likely my middle. So we're gonna go ahead and I bought this two and a quarter inch circular drill kind of going right in the center, we're gonna take it around. Expected. 
So let's go ahead and give it a quick run and see if the pressure holds. It's pretty exciting. So as I take the car around the block, let the engine warm up, and we double check that everything's working as it should, there's a few more things I want to say. First thing is, is I'm really happy with the kit from DPE Corvettes. Honestly, at first, I thought it was a bit expensive. I ended up paying 257 shipped. But the other kits I looked at didn't come with analog gauges, nor did they come with new sensors. Even the cheapest relocation kit that was half decent on Amazon, by the time I added those things in, the price was already getting pretty high. I figure the extra money is worth not having to source mounting hardware and any extra connectors I might need to make it work. You can of course always just buy a new sensor for 30 bucks and replace the old one, but these sensors are notoriously known to fail, so a relocation kit is probably a really good idea. As for the fuel rail cover, if you look at the final result, I'm really not happy with it. You can see the hole ends up being a whole lot bigger than it needs to be, the gauge is off center. I've already started pricing new covers. I'm going to fix it at some point in the future. I have an idea that will make it look a lot better and be easier to fix. However, it requires me having the one that's already on there. So I'm not really sure how to get the perfect fit from the get-go. If someone has an idea, you're more than welcome to throw it down in the comments. Hopefully someone else could benefit from it. Finally, the whole project took me about four to five hours. Uh, considering I'm an amateur mechanic at best, I consider that a victory, honestly. I've never done anything remotely like this. If you're an experienced mechanic, this should take you about two hours at most. I highly suggest this kit from DPE Corvettes. The link is down in the description below. My gauge is working fine on the dash, which was the ultimate goal, but now I have an analog gauge that I can check in the engine bay should anything ever go wrong again. Everything seems to be running fine. It levels out to around 42 PSI, which is about where it was before I did any of this work. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you. It seems like you might actually like my content. Consider checking out some of my other videos and subscribing to the channel. I will see you on the next episode.